Today we're gonna make the mother of flavor. Today we, or this week, we're going to be doing, I guess what I call Japanese fermentation week. We're going to be fermenting different items, different sauces you'll see throughout the week so that we can, I guess like get introduced to new flavors. So I've mentioned this before, but like kind of when you're doing vegan cooking, a lot of the times you, you, you're you really experimenting with like different flavors and different te textures. What happens with fermentation is that you have like, you, you know, like molds and bacteria and they're able to break down the, the foods that we eat into simpler forms. So they're able to break down like carbohydrates and into sugars. They're able to break down proteins into amino acids. And what happens when you break down the normal foods that we eat into these further components is you get different flavors that you would not normally have. And so when you are, you know, doing your vegan cooking and your experiments and you're looking for foods that, you know, like I want it to taste a little bit more meaty or a little bit more savory, and you can't really describe that flavor, but like, I want it to taste more like mushrooms. I want it to taste more like, you know, like when I bite into a steak or something like that. Um, you have to look beyond normal ingredients. I mentioned before about like foraging. I've been on foraging trips where like, they're like, here, taste this leaf. Um, and it completely tasted like lamb. I will, I will find out more about that for you uh, all. And so, um, it's really about like exploring and going out and trying foods that you haven't tried, but then, you know, also taking foods that you have and then breaking them down some more, turning them into different forms and, uh, and kind of getting flavor that way. Ah, today's first recipe is how to inoculate rice and turn it into uh, something called rice koji in your pressure cooker. Okay. And the reason that we're starting off with, with this is it's pretty much the mother of all kind of Japanese fermentation recipes. When you are able to inoculate rice or different grains, well, you can pretty much do anything. You can make different sauces. You can make soy sauces. You can make misos. You can make your rice wine. You can make anything. There's only two ingredients to this recipe. And one is going to be a short grain rice. So not a glutinous rice, just a short grain rice that is uh, a little bit more starchy than your normal rice. And then the second ingredient is uh, a spore called Aspergillus orze. Is that how you pronounce it? And this is a mold. This is a spore that is very common in Japan. What this spore will do is uh, essentially uh, go into the rice and that will be kind of like it's its vessel it'll be its food from that you can take the rice and mix it with other ingredients such as like beans or like nuts and seeds uh, so many things that people can do with it i'm going to show you easily how to do it in a pressure cooker i think a lot of people have that it yeah it is able to regulate the temperature but i could see you doing this in an air fryer that has kind of like a uh, like a low temperature dehydration setting. I could see you doing this with a sous vide machine, geez. Um, but also like I saw a lot of people just literally take like a like a container and then wrap it in blankets and stick it into some place warm. So you know i think that that is a little bit harder because like sometimes the temperature fluctuates but you know you can try this you can try this so before we go into the steps and there's about 10 maybe 11 what i need you to do first is to assess your space what i mean by that is how much rice do you make because the first time when i screwed up i was very greedy i made a lot of rice but i only had a small container like this probably don't want to go any more than like two inches of rice deep because otherwise when it's too thick it can get too hot it might get too moist assess your space like what is the size of your container what is the size of your um of your pressure cooker how big is it okay so i have the the smallest version i think it, it was like the three liter and i thought that one and a half cups of uh, of a short grain rice was fine 
Number one is to wash your rice until there are no starches left. I know that people make a big deal about washing your rice, but that is because the first step is making something called a steamed like dry rice. Meaning like after your rice finishes steaming, it can still separate into separate granules. Okay, so it needs to be kind of like uh, almost like a dry par cooked type rice. And so that's why washing it, getting the starches off of it, very, very important. Step two is to soak your rice for eight to 12 hours overnight. I don't mean 24 hours. Again, the reasoning is because this initial step of having your rice be the perfect condition for the spores to go in it, it needs to be proper and it needs to not be too wet. Okay? If anything, I would say err on the side of a slightly drier rice than a slightly wetter. So at eight to 12 hours, obviously if you live in a cold temperature, that's gonna be very different from you living in a warmer temperature, maybe using warmer water, but uh, kind of that window uh, seems to work. So step three is one that I did not take too seriously, my first two attempts, and it was on my third that I was like, ah, this, this does make a difference, is to, once you drain your rice, set that aside for two hours. Because, because we were making, trying to make cooked hard rice, you need to make sure that the rice particles are dry, even though they are soaked overnight, so there's, there's moisture in them, but you want to make sure that all around them is nice and dry before you steam them. So step four uh, is a humbling step. Uh, many people say to steam the rice. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna put the rice there. Um, it helps to put a sheet, like a, like a cloth underneath. Many people say one hour. And this is one of those things where uh, you should never follow a recipe exactly. You should always use your senses. And that is something that I forgot because this is, this is fermentation and it felt so different. But you know, it really depends on how high your heat, you, you should have your steamer on high heat. I have, you know, kind of like a, a steamer pot and then a steamer attachment right on top. But it really depends on how strong, how powerful your steamer is. In general, you want to steam it for about an hour, 60 minutes. I start checking it at 45 minutes because this is the part that is so important. Like my first batch of rice, like I actually tried to do everything on the, on the pressure cooker the first time where I made the rice in the pressure cooker, too wet. The rice is way too wet. You never want to just cook the rice until it's good enough for eating. It is cooked hard rice that you are going for. So I start checking it at 45, but I actually think like 50, 55 minutes seems to be the sweet spot. And this part's really, really important. When you open the covers and you look at your rice and you feel it and you pinch it, right? You want it to have the texture, I would say of chewed gum that you left overnight on the counter. It, you should be able to see through it. Like it should be cooked through to help the, uh, the, the koji go in and eat it and, and, and whatever and proliferate. But when you press it, it actually shouldn't smash at all. It, it actually should give you a good bit of like bounce and resistance. It should kind of feel rubbery. Um, this part's a little bit hard to explain because if your rice is too dry and there's not enough water, your mold also, or your mold, your koji also won't be able to grow or proliferate or maybe proliferate as quickly or maybe, you know, go into the rice. So you don't necessarily want raw rice, but if you over steam it and it gets too wet, it won't, the spores won't grow right when the moisture level is that high. Just looking at how many minutes it's been. I would lean towards undercooked rice 
if I had to choose, but um, you, you always have the ability after you squeeze it and you're like, okay, like it maybe could go a little bit more to put the, to put the cover back on and then to go another, you know, five, 10 minutes or so. Oh, sanitize everything. <laughs> whatever you're gonna do, whatever you're, you know, like get to, wash your hands, sanitize all of the equipment, whether it be boiling water, you want to put like a little bit of alcohol on it, whatever, just, just make sure and sanitize everything. Um, and so step five is you want to bring the rice over and put it onto a sheet pan lined with another cloth. And the cloth is just there to absorb any excess liquid that you get from the steaming um, from the steaming process. Remember that we want cooked hard rice, and we want to ensure that this process is happening. So that is why we're doing uh, everything. Um, and so afterwards, you just want to move the rice around either with clean hands or a sterilized spoon, and get it down to 40 degrees Celsius is the magic temperature and a lot of the times like when i was doing this it was such a cold day that i realized like the temperature dropped so much more quickly than i thought even um when i got it down to 40 and then i was like oh, okay let's go and get the you know let, let's let's go and prepare the um uh the mold it, it was already dropping so quickly so maybe you know like aim for like 45 and once it's 45 just make sure that you have everything ready okay um obviously above 40 and some of the spores might die off. So you want to um, aim for 40. One of the things that I screwed up on, on, uh, on in my second attempt was because I had cooked the rice, I think slightly too long again, um, I was like, okay, let's just leave it out. Let's just dry it a little bit. I'm sure everything will be fine. And the, the temperature dropped too much. And when I was sprinkling over, the problem with that is when you're sprinkling over the mold and the spores um, and the temperature drops too much, those molds and spores won't start growing first, right? And then what will happen is everything else, all of the other molds and spores and bacteria that's in rice is now competing and the ones that maybe grow better in you know a cooler temperature, those will grow first and you are not going to get the proper mold to grow in your rice first. Everybody is competing for the spot to be, you know, to be living in your rice. So you need to make sure that it is warm enough. You need to work fast. You know, don't don't film things as you go. You need to work fast. So step six, I should have maybe mentioned this earlier, but preheat your pressure cooker. So the temperature setting that you want is the yogurt setting under normal. And I believe that is, I forgot the exact temperature to that, but you want it to not really ever go over 40 degrees Celsius. Um, I'm gonna get you the, the temperature for that, but have that pressure cooker warm because if it's cold and you're just putting this in, then that drops the temperature. And then again, other molds, other spores have a tendency to grow again, Do I have this? Uh, to grow again and then compete. And then, you know, you might be wasting like two days and then find out like, oh man, this, this rice went bad because that's what happened to me. It, it started turning yellow and it wasn't because the spores had was it like sporulated or something like that? And then what I did was I took another um, like kind of like a like a cheesecloth and I had wetted it and I wrung it out real good and I kind of like I even like left it out for you know like like a couple minutes to just dry so that it would just have a wee bit of moisture because I'm always worried that uh, because without moisture the thing also doesn't grow so it needs to have. They say like the air is like 70 to 80%. I can't measure the air. I don't want to get another fermentation machine. But anyways, that is what I ended up doing. And what that served to do was um, the bottom of the uh, pressure cooker, I was worried was going to get a little bit warmer than you know everything else because it has to, the metal bits have to heat up a little bit more. And so I thought this cloth would insulate the, the rice from that and elevate it a little bit. But then in addition, there was that little bit of moisture so that it would never get too dry. But also conversely is if you ever did have a little too much moisture 
in your rice, it will fall and this will catch it instead. Um, instead of it just kind of always being stuck in the rice. So it served a couple of purposes and I actually think it worked quite well. Just left it in there. Step seven, take it into the pressure cooker and kind of gently pat it down so that the whole rice cake patty thing now is the same depth. And the reason again is um, you don't want this koji to get too hot. You don't want this koji to get too cold. You don't want it to get too hot. And so by making the levels even, you're kind of ensuring that, okay, like everything, everything should be relatively similar. Uh, the big thing here is this whole process takes about 48 hours, 45 to 50 hours. So it takes a full two days to do this. But then in addition, you have the rice soaking. So now what you do is uh, close the lid. Um, you want to have the, uh, the, the valve open so that there's some air going through because air is also really important in this process. And then for the first 18 hours, don't open it. I know there are some people that like, you know, like 12 hours in go and like fluff it up and everything. I made the mistake of like, I wanted to check it. Like, I want to see how it's doing. Like open the lid, like smell it. Is it, am, am I smelling kind of like rice wine smells? Am I doing all of that? And it, I think that just lowered the temperature. It kind of disturbed the, the koji. Um, just kind of trust that in your pressure cooker there, it, it's a constant temperature. So just leave it first 18 hours. Don't touch it. Okay. Step eight is what we call first maintenance, the first time that you're dealing with this thing. So when you're opening it, uh, after 18 hours, I would say that it is supposed to smell like sake. It's supposed to smell like a little bit like funky, but like rice whiny. So that means it's a little bit sweet. It's probably maybe a little bit sour, just like a little bit. And then it should smell of rice. So all of those things mixed together, sort of like rice wine. Um, and what you should see in the first 18 hours is um, that the rice should be just a little bit like have little white spots on it. Um, meaning, you know, like the, the, the koji has gone in, it's kind of settled and, and started to, to breed <laughs> um, around. Sight and smell are going to be very important uh, throughout your fermentation process. And what the maintenance part is, um, you're just gonna take another sterilized piece of equipment, a spoon, and what I just did was I just kind of tossed everything around. I made sure that the bottom bit could rotate to the top and everything was mixed around. What I found was much easier because sometimes when you're in the pressure cooker, you can't really see, and sometimes the rice is, you know, like stuck to the cloth, is I, I put the rice, I put actually everything, um, the rice and the cloth, into a box or into a sheet pan. And then I was able to just toss it really quickly, right? Because you don't, you don't want to lower the temperature too much. Um, but what this maintenance process is for is when the rice ferments, it has a tendency to go up in temperature. And again, when it goes above 40 degrees uh, Celsius, uh, things could die and you don't want it to get too high. But because we're having it in a pressure cooker, it's, it's a pretty controlled environment, but still as it ferments, temperature can go up. And so that's why every so often you have to kind of like give it a little, little flip, a flip, a little fluff, a little flip, um, just to maintain that temperature so that it doesn't get too hot. So uh, step nine is the second maintenance. So second maintenance is just fluffing it up again. My recommendation is 12 hours later. Some people do it like, you know, every six hours and then they fluff it up again. I just think when you play around with it too much, you don't really give the, the spores a chance to grow. Uh, too much disturbance and it doesn't really work. Uh, plus, again, we have the pressure cooker in a pretty constant, consistent temperature. so. I'm not too worried about it over overheating. And in my experience, uh, 12 hours later works. Okay. So I, I told you it was about a 48 hour process. We had 18 hours in the first 12 hours in the second. So now it puts you to hour 30. 
okay? So you do your uh, second maintenance and you should start seeing this layer of fuzz form around your rice patty, right? Um, now your rice, uh, it's typically described as it starts clumping together. And it's starting to clump together, not because you have so much moisture in the rice that it's getting you know, too soft and, and, and melty altogether. It's clumping together because the mold spores are starting to grow around it. It's very much like tempeh where it's growing around the rice and it's actually keeping it together. It's clumping it together, it's keeping it together. So at this stage, you should start seeing kind of like a white fuzz. Okay, a little bit like cotton, uh, white fuzz around the rice. And so again, gently, you're gonna do the same thing, um, you know, put it onto a, a surface and just make sure that the bottom comes to the top and everything's just like fluffed out so that it doesn't get too warm. Step 10 is pretty much your last one. So 12 to 15 hours later. So we had 30 hours in the, in the step before. Now step 10, 12 to 15 hours later, we're looking at hour you know, 45. Um, it should be done. You're sh you should open it. You should see that again, another white layer of fuzz has formed around. And it, in fact, the cake should actually pretty much stick stay together uh, when you take it out because this network of mold has, uh, has formed around your rice. What should this smell be like? This is interesting because on Japanese forums, um, it will say that uh, the smell of the rice should be like roasted chestnuts, sweet, sweet roasted chestnuts. When I looked at a Western site, it said that the smell should be similar to old socks. And I sort of agree with both of them uh, a little bit. So I, I think it depends on if you like chestnuts. I think if you like chestnuts, then it will smell kind of, um, it does smell sweet, but it also does smell a little bit more mature. Like no longer do I smell kind of like the, the, the sourness and the sweetness and the thing of, of the rice at the beginning. It now smells like a more mature, uh, sweeter, roasted chestnut, um, old socks, uh, type of smell. So that, that's where, that's how you gauge. And I imagine, even though this is a foolproof uh, video, um, you're gonna have to, maybe, it's gonna take a couple of times. Um, it took me four and I really tried to list it so that you all wouldn't make the same mistakes as I did and, and you can accomplish it in your first try, but uh, it, you know, it takes, it takes time. Then what you do, again, break it up, uh, stick it into, you know, uh, maybe like if you don't have a wooden box, a tray with a new linen cloth underneath so that it can absorb all of the moisture and just like spread your rice out. Uh, leave it for, you know, a couple of hours until it just dries up a little bit. And then you can put it into a, a bag like this. And I stick mine in the freezer just to make sure that everything is okay. And it should last for about three months. So whatever recipe that you are planning to make, which I will show you during the week, um, you have three months from that to make it. Or you can take this rice again and then make new rice koji. So like a lot of people will just blend this up into a powder and then you'll reuse it again for whenever you need to use your spores again. Um, there is, I haven't done this yet and I should because this is, <laughs> This is going to happen soon. Um, I saw a Japanese person uh, make rice koji super easily with inoculated rice koji and then he just shook it in, in a plastic box. And so uh, I think, if anything, that's gonna be Friday because uh, I, have not, I have not done it yet. Whatever, it's fine. Um, so yeah, and so that holds for three months. Don't be overwhelmed. I think that this will be a really fun project for you all. I will see you again tomorrow.